I'm going to give a very simple rundown of calorie cycling for fat loss. So I'm going to explain the main reason I like to cycle calories for fat loss and also how you can set it up. Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jodi and I help you change your beliefs so you can change your body, your health, and your life. This video, we are talking about calorie cycling for fat loss. If you have no idea what calorie cycling is, it basically is just a way to set up your diet so that you have some high days, high calorie days, and some lower calorie days throughout the week. Now, there are a few reasons why you might want to cycle your calories, and there are also various ways to set it up. So if you are interested in more information, I would recommend checking out the article on my website. I'm going to put the link to that in my description box. But for the sake of keeping this video short, I'm going to try and simplify things and probably leave a lot out. It's really important to understand because there are so many reasons for calorie cycling and so many ways to do it. The numbers that I show in this example are different to the ones on my website and they're probably different to what I would suggest for you if you were an actual client of mine. And it's really important to understand as well, calorie cycling isn't essential for fat loss, but it might help optimize it. So in other words, you don't have to cycle your calories to lose fat, but it's something you might want to consider doing in order to optimize the process. Now, the biggest reason I would recommend using calorie cycling is that it can help with adherence to your diet. Consistency is key for weight loss, for fat loss, for any body composition change you wanna make. You need to be sticking to those calorie targets you have day after day. Really, what matters more than your daily calorie target is the weekly total. So just because you need to eat in a calorie deficit overall to lose weight, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to eat in a calorie deficit every single day. If by the end of the week you are in a calorie deficit, then you will still lose weight. Now for fat loss, that's a bit different. Depending on your starting point, you might be able to eat at maintenance calories or you might need a calorie deficit as well. In either case, calorie cycling might help you stick to your calorie target better because you have then the option to have some lower days during the week and just say some higher days on the weekend when you might be going out, um, drinking alcohol and all of that. If you are someone that has never tracked calories before, I would not recommend calorie cycling straight up. I would recommend a flat number to aim for every single day get used to tracking and counting calories, hitting that number, and then once you know you can do that consistently, you might wanna try calorie cycling. Especially if you are finding that every weekend you are going over calories, but during the week you are fine. In that case, it's very likely that calorie cycling can help improve your adherence to your diet. Now, in order to set up calorie cycling, it's pretty simple, really. All you have to do, first of all, is get your weekly calorie target. Now, this will depend on your goal. So if your goal is to go through body recomposition, so to recomp, that is build muscle and lose fat at the same time, then you want to just work out your total daily energy expenditure or your maintenance calorie intake every day and then multiply that by seven to get your weekly total target. Now, if you need to lose body fat, but you also need to lose weight, then what you need to do is get your maintenance, so your total daily energy expenditure, times that by seven, and then take off around 20%. In some cases, you might wanna take off 15%. In some cases, you might wanna take 25% off, but I like to start with around 20%. Take that off the total, you will have a calorie deficit total for the week. Once you have your weekly calorie target, all you need to do is divide it up over the seven days of the week. There are so many ways you might want to do this. I have very much simplified it here just to show you how simple it can be. You might want to make it a bit more scientific in terms of your calculations and the percentages used to create a deficit and stuff like that, but it's not always necessary, just depending on where you're at. So let's use this number as an example. Say your weekly total calorie target. You've done this or you've done this and your total calorie target is 14,000 calories. Then all you need to do is divide it up over these days. So what I have done in this case is 
I have allocated 2300 calories to the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I chose that number as a random number. I just know from experience with how many calories I usually eat, um, 2300 is a decent amount of food to allow for some drinks and going out on the weekend. It might not be enough for all of you. You might want to make that number a bit higher, but you've got to balance the high days with the low days because you've got to be able to stick to these low days as well. And the lower this number is, the worse you're going to feel, the more hungry you'll be, the lower your energy is going to be. So you don't want to make it too low either. You have to be a bit mindful of all of this stuff. I literally just chose 2300 for these days. I took off 2300, 2300, 2300 from this. And then the number that was left, I think it was around 7,100 calories. I just divided that by four. So I divided the remaining calories after I took off the high days by four to get 1775 for the low days. Now you could set this up differently. Say your recomping and your maintenance calorie intake is 2000 calories and that is how you got that 14,000 calorie number. You could then use 2000 and create an actual deficit like minus 15% and get 1700 calories on these days and then allocate the remaining calories on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You could also have high and low days around your training. So just say you want to have high days on your workout days and you're working out three days a week and you work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then you might want to have your high days on your training days and your low days on your rest days. Now, when you set something like this up, it's really important. You have to see if it works for you. It might sound good in your head to have these high days, but if you're really suffering on those low days, you might want to change it back to just 2000 calories every single day. If that is easier for you to stick to. That is what I would recommend doing. So it comes back to consistency. You need to work out what you can stick to best consistently for the longest time. And that is what is going to get you the best results overall. That is all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you would like to see more, please hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email and I will see you in the next video.